Hey, what's up, it's your boy, SK in the building again. Now, you say you've traveled the world, but you've not been to Uganda. I'm like, hey, where did you go? Yeah, you say you've seen the finest wildlife in the world, but you've not seen the wildlife in Uganda. What wildlife are you talking about? <laughs> not Geo? I thought that was television. And you say Wakanda is one of your favorite movies of all time, but you've not been to Uganda. Like, hey, come on. And I know the pandemic is doing the most, but as soon as the pandemic is all over, how about we get down there and make Wakanda too? What you think? Sounds like a big plan, don't it? <laughs> now, you say you've seen the world's most welcoming people, and you've not been to Uganda. Like, come on. Hello? You say you've seen the longest river in the world, but you've not been to its source? Hey, and I know the Brazilian government argues that the Amazon River is the longest in the world, but hey, please, get out of here. You know it's River Nile, and it starts in Uganda. The source of the River Nile is in Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. And there's plenty of reasons why this country is called the Pearl of Africa, and I will tell you why, but I would rather show you. How about we get right into it? In the heart of Africa, far from the crowds of mass tourism, is a land unique in its natural diversity. It's also home to some of the world's most welcoming people. This well-kept secret is known only to the discerning visitor, someone who wants something different from the normal two-week vacation. The name of this land is Uganda. We are only four hours from South Africa, Southern Africa. We are five hours from the Middle East, eight hours from Europe, four hours from West Africa. So we are very, very conveniently placed. Uganda is an emerging tourist destination for travelers from the Middle East. Given Uganda's diverse landscape, flora and fauna, and its national parks, the country enjoys large potential for the development of nature tourism. It has wildlife safaris, gorilla tracking, adventure tourism, bird watching, and cultural tourism. It has mountains, the source of the Nile, and the Great Lakes. Visitors arrive in Uganda at Entebbe, an airport served by flights from all over the world. Although the volume of traffic is growing, the airport can handle passenger numbers easily. Getting into the country is a short and straightforward experience. Kampala is a bustling metropolis. Seat of an ancient kingdom long before colonial times, the city draws Ugandans from all over the country. These are a diverse but peace-loving people 
with different faiths living side by side. To the east of Kampala, near the town of Jinja, is the site of a bitterly contested prize for early European explorers. It's the source of the longest river in the world, the Nile. A short boat ride can take visitors to the exact spot. But what starts as a haven of tranquility becomes a raging torrent just a few kilometers downstream. Here is a paradise for whitewater rafters. Up, up, and paddles up in the air! Paddles up! Woo! As the Nile winds its way across the Ugandan plains, it passes through the largest protected area in the country. Murchison Falls National Park covers nearly 4,000 square kilometers. The variety of life here is spectacular. The plains game alone are worth a visit. But a cruise up the Nile itself from one of the lodges reveals hippos, crocodiles, and hundreds of species of birds. At the end of the journey are the falls themselves. It's here that the world's longest river is squeezed into a chasm just five meters wide before crashing into the broad floodplain below. Whether the falls are viewed from the bottom or the top, the site is spectacular. A park much less visited is Kidepo. In the far north, it's the most isolated protected area in the country. but its very remoteness is part of the appeal. Like Murchison, it's home to a profusion of game, but in some of the most unspoilt, tranquil landscapes in all of Africa. Uganda has been known as the pearl of Africa. The reason why tourism has grown is because, number one, we have the best climate in the world, if you like. We are right on the equator, but we have snow on the equator. Much of the country is over 600 feet above sea level. So it gives us a both hot and cool climate. We are not humid. And because of our geographical location on the equator and the altitude, the, there's such a, a, an incidence of um, wildlife and nature so the country is green for most of the year we have about four rainfall seasons uh, the country is lush is green the people are friendly the temperatures are fantastic the business climate is very very conducive Aim, but in some of the most unspoilt tranquil landscapes in all of africa At the foot of the Ruwenzori Mountains is Queen Elizabeth National Park. Along with the Plains game, a boat trip along the Kazinga Channel offers close-up encounters with hippos, crocodiles and a profusion of bird life. But what really sets Uganda apart from its neighbours is the abundance of our closest relatives, the primates. In Lake Victoria, Ngamba Island is an hour-long boat trip from Entebbe. Here, a sanctuary is home to chimpanzee orphans that have been rescued from all over the country. The island has 95 acres of forest where the chimps can live as natural a life as possible. That's yours, my man. Eddie. 
200 kilometers to the west is Kibale, a huge forest that hosts the greatest concentration of primates anywhere in East Africa. Here, chimps can be seen as nature intended. And after picking, they just eat. Ticks mm. okay. is part of the chimpanzee diet. Yeah. That's why you are seeing them. But Uganda's most prized assets are to be found here. Windy, impenetrable forest is the home of the mountain gorilla. Here, organized treks bring the visitor face to face with one of the most endangered species on the planet. From here, we shall get the chance to see the silverbacks, the adult females or mothers of the babies, the juveniles, and the infants. Uganda, home to some of the most pristine landscapes in Africa. Some will come for the wildlife, others will come for the people. For others, the great forests and the plains alone are what set this country apart. For anyone who wants to escape the tourist crowds, the secret garden of Uganda is waiting and hard to resist. Coming face to face with these elusive primates is an experience one cannot forget. Contrary to their false reputation as the marauding apes, these are in fact very docile and easygoing animals, often also known as the gentle giants. You can't find these endangered mountain gorillas in any zoo as they cannot survive in captivity. In fact, these elusive animals can only be found and seen in Africa. That too in just three countries, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Rwanda. There are approximately just 786 mountain gorillas remaining in the world, with approximately half of them living in Uganda's Bwindi impenetrable forest and the adjoining Mgahinga Gorilla Park. Interestingly, these gorillas share 98% of their genetic composition with us humans. In Elizabeth National Park, which is home to over 612 species of birds, buffaloes, elephants, and hippos, as well as the famous tree-climbing lions of Ishasha. It is somewhat uncommon for lions to climb trees. There are no more than two populations in the whole world of such lions that climb trees. One of these populations is found within the Ishasha sector, and the other population is found in Lake Manyara National Park in Tanzania. Driving through the Ashasha sector of the Queen Elizabeth National Park is an experience that will surely rejuvenate your senses. Now, if you have loved this video, please subscribe to my channel for more of the kind. And I want to say that I love you so much for being here. I'll catch you on the next. Peace out.